الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله والسلام عليه تسليما كثيرا اما بعد one of the most important sciences in the whole religion of al-islam is the science that is known as ulum al-quran the sciences that are connected to the quran the sciences that are connected to the quran they themselves are multiple disciplines and multiple sciences from the single most important sciences of the ulum al-quran is the science that is known as asbab nuzul it is the science in which we are informed from the authentic hadith why allah ta'ala revealed certain chapters or why he revealed certain ayat one of the many benefits of this science many many benefits one of the most important benefits of this science is that when the person knows the reason why a chapter or an ayat was revealed then he or she will comprehend the ayat the correct way if he knows why it was revealed he'll get the correct understanding of that particular chapter or that particular ayat this science alone ummah to islam it goes to show the virtues of the companions radiyallahu anhum ajma'in wa ardahum and that when the quran was revealed this chapter that chapter this ayat those ayat they were revealed on them and because of them something would happen and they would ask a question the ayat would be revealed something would happen in jihad the ayat would be revealed and so forth and so on no one who is here right now was present when those ayat were revealed when those surahs were revealed so as muslims we cannot understand we cannot comprehend this religion without the companions assistance in telling us about all of these issues radiyallahu anhum ajma'in unfortunately in these blessed days in the month of allah muharram there are some people who take this month as an opportunity to curse the companions to speak in a way in which it is vile against the companions of the nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam from what the prophet taught us sallallahu alaihi wasallam is that these days like yesterday was the day of ashura he would fast or he told the people to fast on the 9th on the 10th as well as the 11th to stay today and the whole month if you wanted to fast other days you can fast other days because of the hadith of the nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam afdalu sawm ba'da ramadan shahrullah al muharram the best fast that you can do after ramadan which is wajib the best fast that you can do is the fast in the blessed month of muharram the month of allah so you don't have to just stick to these three days yesterday today yes the 9th the 10th and today the 11th you can fast other days throughout this month because they are virtuous the point that we want to make here today is the companions in this religion they help us to comprehend the deen so how is it possible that a person can claim that he's a muslim and he takes these days to curse the companions This is the day specifically the 11th of Muharram the day that some people they take it as the day to curse specifically Aisha Aisha the wife of the Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam the daughter of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiyallahu anhu the mother of all of the believers and they use the Quran to do that we want to just give one example of the many attempts to make tahrif of the Quran to change the Quran itself or to change the meaning of the Quran there is a surah in the Quran that is used by these people doing these days to curse Aisha and it's the surah that is known as surah tahrim at tahrim it was revealed based upon what was collected by the Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim our mother Aisha said that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would visit one of his wives another one of our mothers Zainab bint Jahsh radiyallahu anha and he would spend significant amounts of time there so Aisha became jealous along with Hafsa his other wife and our mother may Allah be pleased with all of them so they conspired between themselves when he comes out of the house 
Let's tell him that we smell from his mouth a repugnant, foul odor. They knew that the Nabi of Al-Islam did not like foul odors. He didn't like to come to the masjid and he smelt in the masjid that which would be an annoyance to him, to the believers, or to the malaika. So the bathroom area has to be an area in every masjid that should be clean. When we come into the, the, the front door of the masjid, we shouldn't be bombarded with an odor that is foul. You and I, as Muslims, we shouldn't have body odor. The Nabi of Al-Islam did not like bad smells. So he used to tell the people, don't come to the masjid if you eat onions, if you eat garlic. And if you can't come to the masjid as a result of eating onions and garlic, then clearly you shouldn't come to the masjid if you smoke cigarettes. You should take care of your hygiene. Anyway, they said, Ya Rasulullah, did you eat from the maghafir, which was a sweet taste and delicacy to the Arabs. But if you eat it, it will give you a bad odor. He said, La, but what I did was I had some honey in the house of Zainab. They said, well, you have a smell, we don't like it. And they were conspiring against him. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Wallahi, I'm not going to eat honey anymore. And then Allah Ta'ala revealed this ayah, the surah, Surah Al-Tahreem. Ya ayyuhal nabi, lima tuharrimu ma ahallallahu laka, tabtaghi mardata azwajika wallahu ghafurur rahim. Qad faradallahu lakum tahillata aymanikum, wallahu mawlakum wa huwa al-alimul hakim. Nabi, why is it that you make haram upon yourself that which Allah may halal? Honey is halal. Are you seeking to please your wives who are conspiring against you in the first place? Allah is ghafur rahim. He said, verily Allah has shown you people what to do if you swear. Wallahi, I'm not going to do this. Wallahi, I'm not going to eat this. Wallahi, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I won't do this. I won't do that. So the ayah shows us what to do if a person were to do that. And he said that Allah is our Mawla and He is Al-Alimul Hakim. Now these people, Ikhwani, take this ayah and they say, you are Sunni and you believe in the Qur'an. Sahil Bukhari, a Muslim, they narrated that this ayah was revealed because of Aisha and Hafsa. It's a proof and it's Dalil that they were troublemakers. It's a proof and it's a Dalil that Aisha and Hafsa, they went against the Prophet and they conspired. That's in Sahil Bukhari, a Muslim. If the person doesn't know his religion, he never reads about the Asbab and Nazul, he never reads about the position of the companions in this religion, he may become an individual who say, yeah, that does make sense. They seem to be troublemakers. They go further in the same surah. Allah Ta'ala mentioned in this surah to Tahreem, in tatuba ilallahi faqad sagat qulubukuma. وَإِن تَظَاهَرَا عَلَيْهِ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ مَوْلَاهُ وَالْجِبْرِيلُ وَالصَّالِحُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ الظَّهِيرُ You two people, Aisha and Hafsa, if the both of you make Tawbah, if you both make Tawbah, your hearts have been guided to the correct way. But if you continue to conspire against him, if you continue to do this, then you two need to know that Allah is his protector, Jibreel is his protector, all of the religious people are their protectors, as is his protector, as well as the malaika. Again, they come and they say, you see? You see? Allah has threatened them. And not only that, Ikhwani, but they changed a word in the ayah. Instead of saying, Sagat qulubukuma, they said, Zagat qulubukuma. And this is one of the things about these people that we cannot be fooled concerning them. When you watch them as a new Muslim or a Muslim who's been in the deen for a long time and in unison, they are doing their hands and the sight may look interesting to you. That is not a delil that a person is on the truth. When they come out and claim to be against Israel, that is not a delil that a person is on the truth and we should support them or that they're Muslims. They change the words of Allah consistently throughout the Quran. Now is not the time for that. So they changed the word and they said that their hearts went astray. Again, you see you Sunni, this is an ayat in the Quran in which Allah is threatening Aisha and Hafsa, threatening them. And it goes to show that Allah is against them, Jibril is against them and other than that. The man doesn't know his religion, he says that is an ayat in the Quran. And it's supported by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. It must have some significance to it. So they take this day and they use these ayat as a delil to curse the mother of the believers. In addition to that, Ikhwani, the real point that I want to make. 
is in this ayat, Allah Ta'ala has given an example. He said in the Quran, دَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا لِلَّذِينَ كَثَرُوا مْرَأَةَ نُوحٍ وَمْرَأَةَ لُوطٍ كَانَتَا تَحْتَ عَبْدَيْنِ مِنْ عِبَادِنَا الصَّالِحِينَ فَخَانَتَاهُمَا فَلَمْ يُغْنِيَ عَنْهُمَا مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيْئًا وَقِيلْ أُدْخُلَ النَّارَ مَا الدَّاخِلِينَ Allah has given you this ummah. He has given a similar to, a metaphor, a simile. He has given this example for those who disbelieve. The example of Noah and Lot, Nuh and Lot, their two wives. Both of them were married and they were under the authority of two of our righteous slaves and they betrayed their husbands. As a result of their betrayal, it would be said to them, Yomu Qiyama, enter into the hellfire with those who are going into the hellfire. Their relationship with their husbands was of no benefit to them. Now these people who take today as a day to curse Aisha, they come and they say, look, Aisha, she committed zina. She committed adultery. And the proof that she committed adultery is this ayat of the Quran. This ayat says that Noah's wife and Lot's wife, both of them made khiyana. Both of them were unfaithful. Both of them made khiyana to their husbands. As a result of that, they're going to be of those people who are in the hell fire. So the point of thinking is, Noah was the first Rasul. If his wife can make zina, everybody's wife can make zina. Look, if his wife made zina, any and everyone can make zina. So this is a delil. That although Aisha is the wife of the Nabi, she still made zina. And they use this ayah to support that. Now as I mentioned, Ikhwani, from the beginning, the knowledge of the Asbab al-Nuzul, of all of the Qur'an, it helps us to understand what is the intent behind these ayah and these issues. Did Abu Bakr and Mount Uthman, did Ali ibn Abi Talib understand these ayah this way? The khiyana in this ayah, the betrayal that Noah's wife and Lot's wife made in this ayah, is not the betrayal of zina. As Muslims, and we sit here right now, we have to believe in Allah, we have to believe in the malaika, we have to believe in the books, we have to believe in the prophets and the messengers. Part of believing in the prophets and the messengers is that as Muslims, we don't believe that their wives can make zina. We don't believe that that's something that can happen, that Allah would allow to happen. How is the Nabi, any Nabi, going to come out to his people and give them da'wah to Allah, and it is known that his wife made zina. The people are going to say, hey, go and solve your own problem before you talk to us. Your wife is a zania. It's not something that's conceivable or acceptable. The meaning of the khiyana in this ayat, the meaning of the betrayal of these two women to, te to these two righteous prophets in Al-Islam, these messengers, is the fact that they disbelieve. The khiyana is kufr. In the case of Noah, Noah's wife disbelieved in him. Noah's wife used to tell the people, look at Noah building a boat. He's mashur, he's majnoon. He's crazy building a boat in the middle of the city. She didn't support her husband. They were not on the same page. In the case of Lot, whenever he had male visitors, whether they were angels or other than that, his wife would go out and she would tell the people in the city who wanted to be homosexuals, come and do al-fahisha with Noah's guests. That was the betrayal. That was the betrayal. Like anyone from amongst us, his wife takes the secrets out in the street. His wife does not take care of having his back. He's on one page, she's on another page. That's the meaning of khiyana here. The khiyana here is not talking about, the betrayal is not talking about zina. Hasha lillah. Allah Azza wa Jal, for the people of the sunnah, for the people whose hearts and their intellect are correct, He gives us these examples, these metaphors, these similar tools for benefits. This surah is one of the most beneficial surahs in all of the Qur'an for our community. In more ways than one. This ayat and these surahs were not revealed in order to take the companions as target practice. To make takfir of them, tafsiq of them. To make these accusations about the closest person to the Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this example of this method is in the Qur'an as Allah mentioned in so many ayahs, وَيَدْرِبُ اللَّهُ الْأَمْثَالَ لِلنَّاسِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَذَكَّرُونَ Allah gives you these examples in the hopes that you would understand, you would reflect. So what's the reflection? What's the lesson? 
from the ladies, those two ladies who were married to those two prophets. The point is that it helps us to understand if the man is a religious man and his wife is irreligious. He wants his children to have the tarbiyah of Al-Islam. He wants to talk to his kids and, drive and, and, and guide his children towards the truth. But the wife wants something else. This ayah tells that man, be patient. You were not better than Nuh and you're not better than Lot. But this happened to them. Their family members, those who were close to them, their wives, they were not on the same page. That's one of the benefits of the ayah. Not cursing Aisha radiallahu anha. One of the benefits of the ayat ikhwani is to show our community how this thing that we hang on to, the racism for an example. He's an Arab, he's a Sharif, he's from this madhab. Even his claim that he's Salafi or other than that. Those issues, they don't have much to do with the reality if the actions go against that. The fact that these two women, they were connected to the closest, they had the closest connection to those prophets. Their connection, their lineage, their marriage is not going to benefit them Yom al -Qiyama. You being an Arab won't benefit you Yom al -Qiyama. You being a Sayyid or Sharif won't benefit you Yom al -Qiyama. That connection will be of no benefit. That's the benefit of the ayah. Not to curse Aisha radiallahu anha. As a result of that, ikhwani, Allah went on to give us some more examples. Showing clearly for the people of the sunnah, people who have good hearts, people who have intellect, these ayat are to be pondered upon and the lessons extracted from them that are practical to make us better people. How does a person become better? By changing the meanings of the ayat and being against the wife of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How is that something that is possible? How? How is it? In the deen, the Quran has taught us how to have adab with everyone. How to have adab with your mother, your father. How to have adab with the person in charge of the position. And how to have adab with the wives of the Nabi. Allah mentioned in the Quran for many, many ayat that show us this. وَمَا كَانَ لَكُمْ مِنْ تُؤْذُوا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ وَلَا تَنْكِهُ أَزْوَاجُهُ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ أَبَدًا إِنَّ هَذَا إِنَّ ذَلِكَ كَانَ إِنَّ اللَّهِ عَظِيمًا It is not permissible for you people to annoy the Nabi. You Muslims, you cannot annoy him. It's not acceptable. Nor is it permissible for you to marry his wives after him. This is something that is big with Allah. Now the question that presents itself for every Muslim, getting married is halal, it's mustahab. You can marry women, it's halal. And yet Allah made it haram for any man to desire to marry one of his wives. And if the man had that desire, that's annoying the Nabi. Now if Allah made it haram for them to get married, do you think He would allow a man to make zina with them? We are the, we're the intellect of the people. We're the intellect of the people who want to hit themselves in the head. And where's the intellect of the people who say, yeah, those are our brothers in Al-Islam. They're against the Yahud. They're against America. So the friend of my friend is the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Where's the intellect of the people? From the etiquette in Al-Islam during the time of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the statement of Allah Ta'ala وَإِذَا سَأَلْتُمُهُنَّ مَتَاعٍ فَاسْأَلُهُنَّ مِنْ وَرَاءِ حِجَابٍ If you men who are not their maharam, if any of you want something from him, like us, if you will live in that time, if you want something from any of his wives, ask for that thing from behind a veil, how are they going to make zina? When they were always protected behind the veil. Always. When they wanted to make Hajj, the Khalifa during that time, after the death of the Nabi, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he will put the wives of the Prophet in special canopies. He will make an, not an announcement. Oh you people, these are the wives of the Nabi. They're in the canopy, in the holdage. You can't see inside. They would tell them, don't let any of you come close to it. And the men would avoid it. From Medina to Mecca and all the way back, they were not women like our mothers. Our mothers, that lady who's a Muslim, your mother, our mothers who, she can sit a whole month or two or three, not get a call, not get a visit from any of her relatives. They were not like that. People were looking after them. They were never by themselves. To make zina before the Nabi while he was living or after him. Sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. These ayat ikhwani in the surah was revealed for us to take lessons, practical, beneficial lessons. From the lessons is what Allah Ta'ala mentioned after that. وَدَّرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا لِلَّذِينَ آمِنُوا مْرَأَةَ فِرْعَوْنَ 
إذ قالت ربي ابني لي عندك بيت في الجنة ونجني من فرعون وعمله ونجني من القوم الظالمين After Allah gave us that first example for the religious man who has an irreligious wife he was fair and he was just he showed us that Islam is not a religion of male chauvinism it is not a religion in which we are against women this is not the deen of Allah Allah is fair and just in the next example in the same surah he said and Allah gives the example for those who believe the example of the wife of Fir'aun when she said oh my lord oh my lord build for me a house in Jannah next to you close to you and save me from Fir'aun and from the actions of Fir'aun and save me from the oppressive people the people of Fir'aun so what's the lesson that Aisha is a Zania you don't get that from that the lesson that we receive from this is similar to the ayat before it, the metaphor before it, and that is, the lady is a religious lady. She's a practicing lady. She wears hijab. She prays. She's fasting on the day of Ashura. Her husband wants to have relationships with her to break her fast in Ramadan, outside of Ramadan. The husband gambles, he drinks. The husband is all kind of, he's in all sorts of things. She looks at the situation and she says, Allah mentioned in the Quran, the wife of Fir'aun, Asiya, one of the two or four complete women. And in that Quran, she was married to a man who had more kufr than any other human being. He had more dhulm than any other human being. And my husband is not as bad as him. And yet that lady made dua. That lady relied on Allah. That lady right there did not leave her deen. And she didn't do haram because her husband was doing haram. She was on the sirat mustaqim. That's the lesson that the lady can be in that condition just as the man can be in that particular condition. No way in the world, Ikhwani, by any stretch of the imagination of a person who has intellect, can he understand these ayat are referring to the zina of the wife of Nuh, Lot, and definitely not the wife of the Nabi of Al Islam, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Aisha. Four women, four women are complete. Some of them are from our deen. Khadija, Fatima, radiallahu anhuma. And the Prophet said that Aisha radiallahu anha in relationship to all of the women is like the thari. She's like the best food that the Arabs had. Meaning she's better than everyone. So if the other ones are complete, she's complete as well. How do we get an extract from that? And then the last ayat from these examples of Khwani that we get benefit from. Benefit in comprehending our religion and comprehending our lives and putting them into perspective. The husband has a wife who's not cooperative, children who are not on the same page. Be patient. Noah had a wife who wasn't cooperative. Noah had a son who didn't get with the program. You're not the only one. You're not the first. Don't say, woe was me, woe was me. Don't give up. Just maintain the course like Noah did. 950 years giving all of them dower. 950 years telling his son, come on and get on the boat, man. Not giving up on your child and cutting them off. Not giving up on your wife and cutting her off just like that. And also the woman, the same issue. After that, Allah mentioned in his justice, the daughter of Imran, Maryam. Maryam. And he described her, Alati ahsanat farjaha. فَنَفَخْنَا فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِنَا Maryam, the daughter of Imran. She was a virtuous woman. She didn't make zina. We blew the spirit from amongst us inside of her. She believed in the books of Allah and his kalimat. And she was from those who were obedient. The justice of Al-Islam. The man is religious and his family are not religious. The lady is religious and the family is not religious. And then there are those people who are not married at all, like Maryam. Not married at all. But if you're religious, Allah Azawajal is going to be with you. He didn't leave anyone out in these three ayat. People of intellect, they understand that. So if the person is not married, he doesn't allow the pressure of his society or her culture to make her go crazy because she's not married. It's not written yet. Continue to try to get, be, be, get married. But in the meantime, be a person who is religious. Be a person who holds on to your religion. Don't compromise aspects of your religion. These are the lessons that we get from these ayat. And not the lessons that the people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not want any good for them as based, based upon what we see from them. 
Ashura, the day that Hussein was murdered, slaughtered, assassinated unjustly, is a dark day in Islam. It's a dark day in Islam. But we don't have Ghulu. Hassan and Hussein are from the leaders. They are the two leaders of the young people in Al-Jannah. They are the two sayers of the people in Al-Jannah. They're from Ahl al-Bayt and they're from the awliya of Allah and we love them. But not to the degree where we make Ashura the day that's more important than Ramadan. Is more important to them than Hajj. More important than, to them than any Eid. And that's why you see them carrying on on this day more in this way than they do on any other day. Now the goal and the objective here, Ikhwani, is not Birmingham City versus Aston Villa. Us against them. That's not the point here. Getting you riled up. Us against them. The point here is, the companions of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they are the deen. Anyone who tries to knock that wall down, there's a problem with him. Muawiyah, Muawiyah, Ibn Abi Sufyan. Allah has made Muawiyah the curtain for the companions. Those people hate Muawiyah with a passion. Why? Because he was against Ali ibn Abi Talib based upon Ijtihad. Ali is better than Muawiyah, but nonetheless Muawiyah is a companion. And no matter what you do, the Mahdi, when he comes back, if he came back right now, he's going to put peace in Somalia. Right now. If he came back right now, he's going to be peace in Palestine, in Al Iraq. He's going to make peace all over the earth, be Ibnillah. And with that, and with that, the companion that committed zina, radiallahu anha, is better than the Mahdi. That's our religion. That's the point here. The companion that urinated in the masjid and put najasa is better than the Mahdi. Better than him. So Muawiyah is a companion. When Muawiyah went out to make jihad with the Nabi, the air that he breathed in his nostrils, and the dirt, the dirt that went inside of his nose, that went in his nostrils, is better than everybody else. Better than Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. The piece of hair, the piece of hair off of the head of one of them, off of the beard of one of them, is better than Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. You and I, if we took all of the mountain of Uhud to give it sadaqa fi sabilillah, you and I would not reach a half of a mud of what one of those companions gave in this religion. That's the point here. Not Birmingham City, Aston Villa. This is not the point. So Muawiyah radiallahu anhu. Whoever loves Muawiyah, he loves Ali ibn Abi Talib. Whoever loves Muawiyah, he loves the Nabi of Al-Islam sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa nas'alallah ta'ala tawfiq wa sadaq. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Khwani, like you, I saw this issue with the WikiLeaks, in which they claim that some of the Muslim leaders, the hukam from the Arabs, were asking the non-Muslims, come and help us against Iran. Come and get Iran. Like some of you, Allahu alam, my heart is not happy with something like that. Why do we have to use the kuffar? Why do we have to? Where's the wala wal bara? And this is not about hukam. This is about Muslims. Why do we have to use the kuffar like that to be against one another? Why? And if they came to bomb Iran, there are serious implications about that. Innocent people dying. They get further and deeper in that area, our area. It's a problem. It's a problem. But at the same time, if it is true that those who can said that, if it is true, I don't know, but if it is true, then as Muslims, you need to know. The Rafida. The Ifna Sharia, those types of Shiite, they never meant good for Muslims in Islam. Not from the day that they started, and they were started by the Yahud until this very day. They never meant good for Muslims. Now if I said to you that your mother who gave birth to you, your biological mother is a Zania, your sister is a Zania, your wife is a Zania, you're going to get upset about that, rightly so. That's from a man's fitrah. Aisha radiallahu anha, the, 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 the dust that's in her nose, the khimar that she used to wear, is better than your wife and your mother. Because she's a companion of the Nabi. So how in the world could this group or this jama'at, this person say, let's go and get close to the Shiites? What kind of religion is that? What kind of deen is that?
someone who's cursing the wives of the Nabi of Al Islam. Hassan Nasrullah from Lebanon, when he had that problem with the Yahud, the friend, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. They're fighting Israel. So I, now this is an issue of aqidah, an issue of knowing your religion. So again, brothers and sisters in Al Islam, we have to come back to learning the book of Allah. Reading it, memorizing it, taking those sciences and comprehending them. And from the most important sciences is the science of Asbab al Nuzul. Now, some of us, and this is the last point, we come from countries where these people have had an impact upon us. Although you don't curse the companions, you don't hit yourself in the head, you don't believe that, you're against it. But because of the close proximity, we take on the ways of many people. Hindus, we've taken on the way of Hindus because we're close to them. The khatam and other than that. It's from what they do. Anyway, when we have children, people of the sunnah, you shouldn't call your child Fida Hussein. The sacrifice of Hussein, Ghulam Hussein, Khadam Hussein. You're not a person who's against the other companions. It sounds like a nice name. Fida Hussein means the sacrifice of Hussein. They came up with those names, meaning if I was there when Hussein got killed, I'd have been in the front line trying to protect him and that's why they draw blood. So the point is, we can't even have the adna ta'athur bihim. You can't be affected by them at all. You say Ali, don't say karram Allahu wajhahu. Amir al-Mu'minin Ali. And you only say that for Ali? Wallahi Abu Bakr, Umar Uthman, they're better than Ali ibn Abi Talib in the scales with Allah Ta'ala and in the eyes and the hearts and the aqidah of the people of the sunnah. So in closing I say, the companions, the companions, the companions, ibadallah, love them, honor them, defend them, and don't be of the people who are wanting to be politically correct and we want to be united with people who curse our mothers. Hey hat, hey hat. It will never happen insha'Allah. We ask Allah Ta'ala to establish us upon the religion of the companions radiallahu anhum ajma'een and to make our deen like their deen and that he causes us to be into the jannah til firdaus along with them as every single one of them will be in the jannah with the Nabi and closest to him in proximity no doubt will be his wives. May Allah be pleased with all of them. Aqam as-salat yarhamakumullah.